Hello, welcome to Pathagonia. This is Jay Huang. Sorry it's been such a while since I last posted. Dermpath has been a bit busy, but we're going to talk about epidermal tumors using Kurt's notes. If you already haven't been, check out his About Me section. He's got his famous, very useful Kurt's notes on various organ systems. And without further ado, let's talk about epidermal or keratinocyte tumors. Let's talk about this precancerous lesion called actinic keratosis, where you have a risk of malignancy to squamous cell carcinoma around 8 to 20%. It's due to chronic sun exposure. You'll have clinically a rough scaly papule. And I like to think of the, the mnemonic Spain, as in the country, S for solar elastosis, P for perikeratosis, A for atypia, and then N for not full thickness. If it is full thickness, it's squamous cell carcinoma in situ, which we'll talk about. You'll have this eyeliner sign where you have a typical keratinocyte, especially in the basal portion in the lower third of epidermis. So from a low power, it looks like, like there's eyeliner smudged in the base, basal layer. Uh, you'll have alternating ortho and parakeratosis. Here we see a section of parakeratosis only, and you'll have sparing of the cutaneous adnexa. This is important because if it involves the adnexa, it's more likely to have squamous cell carcinoma in situ. Speaking of which, AKA Bowen's disease, there's no epidermal maturation. Um, atypical cells are at all levels of the epidermis all the way to the top where you'll have a loss of granular layer and the epidermis appears disorganized because there's no maturation at the top. And then squamous cell carcinoma, the second most common form of skin cancer, 20% of cutaneous malignancies after basal cell carcinoma. It's locally destructive, there is metastatic potential and depending on the size and location and depth invasion, it'll determine whether you get an excision, Mohs, micrographic surgery, radiation, and you'll have these nests of atypical squamous cells with paradoxical maturation where the cells look like they're, they look like they should belong on the top. Um, very eosinophilic, it'll invade the dermis, and there will be evidence of squamous differentiation, keratinization and intercellular bridges. And if there's not that well-defined features, then you can classify it as either moderately or poorly differentiated. Findings that suggest invasion are jagged interface with dermis, aberrant deep keratinization, single cell invasion, and risk factors for metastasis. High risk features are if the squamous cell carcinoma is on the ear, lip, if it's greater than two centimeters, death, evidence of perineural invasion, and then you want to comment if it's less than or greater than 0.1 millimeters evidence of desmoplastic features. And there are different variants of squamous cell carcinoma, including keratoacanthoma, the crateriform, well-differentiated variant of squamous cell carcinoma that spontaneously regresses in most cases. Acantholytic squamous cell carcinoma, where you'll have some acantholysis, along with large epithelioid cells with dense eosinophilic cytoplasm and dyskeratotic cells. Verrucous squamous cell carcinoma, where, where it's really well-differentiated, it has this pushing border, acanthotic papilla, no infiltrated growth, and inflammation at the base, and desmoplastic squamous cell carcinoma, where it becomes spindle or sarcomatoid, and where IHCs will come to the rescues with high molecular weight cytokeratins, P63 and P40. It's important to note that pan-keratin can be lost in poorly differentiated and spindle cell tumors. Speaking of spindle cell squamous cell carcinoma, think about your differential spindled lesions in the skin, SLAM differential, S for spindled squamous cell carcinoma, L for leiomyosarcoma, A for atypical fibroxanthoma, and M for melanoma. Basal cell carcinoma, the most common malignancy in humans, it's a locally aggressive and destructive behavior with very low metastatic potential. If you have a kid with a basal cell carcinoma, you want to consider Gorlin syndrome. You'll have basaloid cells with increased NC ratio. You'll have nests with peripheral palisading, as you can see here. You can have apoptotic bodies as well as mites and cleft formation as well. And they can have some features of squamoid differentiation in basal cell carcinoma. And conversely, you can have features of Basal, basaloid differentiation in squamous cell carcinoma. Um, it may mimic annexal structures, making margins challenging, especially if you're looking at a Mohs or an excision case. However, basal cell carcinoma cells should have darker chromatin, more apoptosis and mites, and paler cytoplasm than the hair follicles. And there are subtypes, and the very important ones to know are micronodular and sclerosing morphiform. 
infiltrative and basal squame, which are more aggressive variants. Um, the other variants are nodular, superficial, infundibulocystic, where it resembles the hair follicle, and fibroepithelioma epincus, where it has these anastomosin cords. On our right, Dr. Schaber gives us an example of infiltrative basal cell carcinoma. So stains to help you differentiate basal cell from squamous cell are BRAT4, which B stands for basal cells. Seborrheic keratosis, one of my favorite entities to look at histologically. You'll have these horn cysts. You'll have these flat, flattened reedy ridges. You'll have interlacing pigmented epidermal strands. You'll have acanthosis and hyperkeratosis. Solar lentigo is thought to be the precursor for seborrheic keratosis, according to some staff. They're also known as H spots. You'll have these dirty puppy dog feet, and these are finger like proliferations, hyperpigmented, reedy growing down from the epidermis. These are keratinocytes, not melanocytes that are the pigmented cells. Veruca vulgaris, aka wart, this is HPV induced. You'll have this circumscribed lesion. You'll have cup like reedy ridges. You have papillomatosis, where you'll have spires some parakeratosis, um, some serum. You'll have, in the DELs, you'll have hypergranulosis. Oilocytes may be variably present, and there are such entities like a Veruca plana, which is a flat wart, where your features to help you out with these are an increased hypergranular layer, as well as coilocytic chain. And one of your differentials for Veruca vulgaris is a keratoacanthoma. More skin tumors include uh, epidermal inclusion cysts, or otherwise known as follicular infundibular cysts, because these epidermal inclusion cysts arise specifically in the follicular infundibulum. And that region has a granular layer. And this is an acquired unilocular cyst due to trauma. Again, it has, it's lined by the squamous epithelium with a granular layer and has this laminated basket weave keratin and may rupture and become inflamed because our body does not like keratin. Um, and so it'll have a granulomatous, sometimes superative, meaning a lot of neutrophil inflammation. Dermoid cyst is present at birth. Um, it's like a ike or like epidermal inclusion cyst, but it has hair follicles and sebaceous glands. Pilar or trecholemal cyst, this part of the hair follicle is like the isthmus catagen, and that region doesn't have a granular layer. And that's why for pilar cysts, you don't have a granular layer. You have this abrupt keratinization. The keratin is compact, often noted as wet, and you'll have a stratified squamous epithelium. Sebaceous tumors, you can have ectopic sebaceous glands. It's not associated with hair follicles. You can have sebaceous hyperplasia, where it's the overgrowth of sebaceous glands, where you'll have lobules of sebacytes arranged around the infundibulum of central hair follicle, and one layer of basaloid cells compressed at the periphery of sebacytes, and you should have no cytologic atypia, no mitotic phase. Sebaceous adenoma, it kind of has on low power, it looks like a sebaceous hyperplasia, but it has a typically larger nodular aggregate. There's a lobular downgrowth from the epidermis, and predominance is greater than 50% of sebacytes, and cytologic atypia not prominent. And if it's greater than 50% of basaloid cells or germinative cells, then it's called a sebacioma. Sebaceous carcinoma is an aggressive tumor. It has high risk of metastasis, greater than 30%. There's a strong association with muir torre syndrome, a type of Lynch syndrome if patients have multiple sebaceous tumors. The genes implicated include MLH1, MSH2, MSH6, PMS2, and the eyelids are the most common site, in fact, accounting for 75% of cases. You'll have clear cells, but it can vary greatly in number. It'll have prominent cytologic atypia and pleomorphism. It can have mitotic figures, including atypical forms, and it'll stay with AR, EMA, and factor 13A. Ecrin spur adenoma, these look like blue cannonballs in the dermis. Uh, one of my staff likes to call it like burritos in the dermis with black beans, meaning they're lymphocytes interspersed. These are basophilic tumor nodules in the dermis, and it has a biphasic appearance with two cell types, peripheral small cells with scant cytoplasm and small hyperchromatic nuclei, and central larger cells with eosinophilic cytoplasm and oval vesicular nuclei. And the tumor lobules sometimes are surrounded by thickened basement membrane, similar to a cylindroma. So spiradenoma, your differential is automatic cylindroma, which looks like jigsaw puzzles, or I think Dr. Jerry Gardner mentioned like giraffe spots. And it has basaloid blue nests in the dermis and it has two cell populations and the basement membrane matrix is more prominent. You'll have, again, these dense eosinophilic basement membrane. 
And the tumor, lo tumor lobules have complex pattern where they seem to fit together in an irregular jigsaw puzzle-like fashion. Chondroid syringoma, which is, I, I find it really cool because it's, it's also called cutaneous mixed tumor. And it's essentially a pleomorphic adenoma, which we associate with the salivary gland, but it's primary to the skin. And you'll have epithelial cells embedded in mixoid, chondroid, or fibrostroma. Tumors show eccrine and apocrine differentiation. You'll have ductal structures of variable size and shape present, and the ducts are lined by two layers of cuboidal cells and a peripheral layer of myoepithelial cells. Syringoma is part of your Paisley tie differential. If you don't know what a Paisley tie looks like, I recommend you Google it because it helps because I didn't know what it looked like in the first place. That includes desmoplastic trichoepithelioma, microcystic adnexal carcinoma, syringoma, and morpheiform basal cell carcinoma. So you'll have these small ducts, nests, cords, and cysts in the superficial dermis. These ducts and cysts are lined by one or two layers of small bland appearing cuboidal cells. And they have that tadpole appearance with this comma-like shaped tail. And the dilated ducts may have eosinophilic contents, which is like sweat contents. And it's most common in the head and neck, especially the eyelids, although you can get them elsewhere, including the vulva. And if it's deep perineural, and if there's perineural invasion, you want to consider differential of microcystic adnexal carcinoma. Pyloma trachoma, or calcifying epithelioma of Malherbe. I don't know why I was always asked that, but that's another name for pyloma trachoma. It's well circumscribed with a mixture of basaloid looking cells and shadow or ghost cells, as you can see here, where you'll have abundant pig cytoplasm and open space at their center where the nucleus was. You can have dystrophic calcification and foreign body giant cell reaction surrounding tumor. And it kind of looks like the equivalent in the CNS tumor of cellar tumors your adenomatous craniopharyngioma. You'll have like similar histologic findings. Going back to pyloma trachoma though, um, you'll, you can, if you have infiltrated prominent nucleoli necrosis and mites, you want to consider could this pyloma trachoma have become cancer, uh, pylometrical carcinoma. Trichofolliculoma is a cystic tumor that communicates to the overlying epidermis. You'll have cystic spaces filled with keratinaceous debris and hair shafts. It's lined by squamous epithelium with a thin granular layer, and you'll have numerous small primitive follicles radiate around periphery of tumor and communicate with the central cystic space. So this is like the mama tumor, and then these are all the baby buds that kind of go around it. Trichelomuma, uh, as I like to say, because it's associated with Cowden syndromes and cows moo. So trichelomuma, you'll have a lobular proliferation of mature squamoid cells with pale to clear staining cytoplasm and the reason why they're pale to clear is it derived from the outer hair root membrane, and that looks clear. clear. You can have peripheral palisading of the basaloid cells. The cells are surrounded by thickened, glassy appearing basement membrane, and that helps you differentiate from basal cell carcinoma. Remember, you have that clefting in basal cell carcinoma. But trichelomuma, you have this glassy appearing basement membrane, and you can have multiple broad connections to the epidermis and follicles. You can have some erosion on the top of the papule, and it's associated with Cowden syndrome. And here's a nice mnemonic for Cowden's. It's wearing a pink a ribbon, so it's associated with uterine cancer and macrocephaly. It has a bell around its neck where the thyroid is, so it's associated with thyroid cancer, and then you have the udders and associated with breast cancers. Tying it all up, we talked about epidermal tumors. Talk about precursors, AK, think of your mnemonic spain, solar elastosis, parakeratosis, and yeah, no full thickness atypia. You can have the eyeliner si sign, you'll have alternating para and ortho, and it'll spare the adnexa. Full thickness atypia is squamous cell carcinoma in situ. Squamous cell carcinoma, you'll have jagged interface with dermis, aberrant dekeratinization, single cell invasion. Make sure you describe whether it's well, moderate, poorly differentiated, and you can have variants of squamous cell carcinoma. Basal cell carcinoma is the most common. Look for peripheral palisading. Look for high NC racial basaloid appearing cells with mitotic figures and apoptotic bodies and stromal clefting. You can have mucin, burrep 4 will stain basal cell carcinoma. Aggressive variants are micronodular infiltrated sclerosing or morpheiform and basal squamous. And morpheiform is your uh, Paisley tie differential. Separate keratosis. Look for those horn cysts, pseudo horn cysts. You can have wheat like keratin. You'll have a flat um, reedy ridge, acanthosis, hyperkeratosis. Solar lentigo, look for those dirty 
puppy dog feet. It's a proliferation of keratinocytes, not melanocytes, and it's thought to give rise to seborrheic keratosis. Veruca vulgaris, HPV-induced, look for the blood in the spires, hypergranulosis in the dells. Look for maybe some a little bit of coilocytic change. You can have Veruca plana. Epidermal inclusion cysts, laminated basket weave keratin, granular layer, stratified epidermis, pilar cysts. You'll have abrupt keratinization, compact keratin, wet keratin, no granular layer. And dermoid cyst is present at birth. It's like an ike but has hair follicles and sebaceous glands. Sebaceous tumors, ectopic sebaceous glands, not associated with hair follicles, whereas sebaceous hyperplasia, it is. Um, you'll have more lobules of sebacytes without atypia. Sebaceous adenoma, it's typically larger nodular aggregates than sebaceous hyperplasia, and you'll have greater than 50% of sebacytes. If you have greater than 50% of the basaloid cells, it's called a sebacioma. And then sebaceous carcinoma, always think Mouer-Torre syndrome, a type of Lynch syndrome, MLH1, MSH2, MSH6, PMS2, generally rises in the eyelid. There'll be prominent cytologic atypia. Eccrine spiradenoma, think about burritos in the dermis or blue cannonballs in the dermis. You'll have a biphasic appearance, peripheral small cells and central larger cells with eosinophilic cytoplasm. Cylindroma, think about your jigsaw puzzle with prominent dense eosinophilic basement membrane. Chondroid syringoma, basically a pleomorphic adenoma in your skin. Syringoma, part of your Paisley tie differential, this tadpole with comma-like tail, where you'll have desmoplastic trichoepithelioma, microcystic adnexal carcinoma, and morpheiform basal cell carcinoma, in addition to syringoma for your differential. Pyloma trachoma, or calcifying epithelioma, malherb. You'll have a basaloid cells, You'll have ghost cells as well. You can have dystrophic calcifications, trichofolliculoma. Look for your mama follicle as well as the baby little follicles sprouting around it. And then tricholoma. Look for those clear cells. Look for that palisading, but shouldn't have clefting. You should have a prominent thickened basement membrane. And thank you so much for watching this episode of Pathagonia. This is Jay Huang, and we'll see you next time. Bye.